Morning Faith Community Church. We're here with another devotional in Acts. The more I'm reading through Acts, the more I am falling even more in love with God's Word. Um, it's such a great book following the beginnings of the early church. And so Acts chapter 13, this, uh, this chapter holds Paul's first sermon. And in fact, this is where Paul starts to be called uh, Paul more than Saul did. And actually, I actually grew up thinking that Saul uh, was uh, changed to Paul at the moment of his conversion, kind of like uh, God named Jacob Israel or Abram Abraham. But it turns out that's not the case. And his his name uh, eventually just uh, turns to Paul because I guess that's uh, Greek for uh, his name Saul. So Paul uh, ends up becoming his name uh, more here. You don't see it too many more times uh, in Scripture after that point. But this is his first mission trip. This is going to be his first sermon as well. And so they set off um, to go to uh, to Cyprus. And so this is uh, Paul, this is uh, Barnabas and John here. And they see, they get all the way through Cyprus to the end, um, to the end of this uh, nation. And there's a, um, a pre-consul here. And so this is a man of power in the Roman world. And there's also a sorcerer that's with this guy, and I think his name is Elimus. So Elimus, he's a sorcerer, um, and this pre-consul uh, person, uh, person of power in Rome, summons them to come see him. And so they share the gospel with this guy, and Elimus, this sorcerer, sees what's happening and tries to start twisting words. Um, but eventually, uh, what happens is, is Paul calls him out. He says, you're, you're, you're full of lies and deceit, and now you're blind. And so by God's power, Elimus is now blinded, and he's, he has to be led around uh, by the hand. And so the preconsul sees this happen, and he believes Paul's words, and he becomes a believer here, which is amazing because this is a, a high up guy in the Roman world. Um, and so this is fantastic happening, but but the way that salvation came about for him was uh, he saw the power of God displayed in Elimus, and that's how God used this evil sorcerer person who was trying to, um, trying to hinder the spreading of the gospel here. And so um, that's, the, that's what happens here in Cyprus. And then they set sail for Antioch. And Antioch is, has the Jewish synagogue there, and so it comes to the Sabbath day, and they and Paul and his companions they sit down uh, in the synagogue, and so um, it's the Sabbath day. The uh, the church leaders or the the synagogue leaders they're uh, giving the they're giving the law of Moses. They're reading the Old Testament, and they ask Paul. They say, "Hey, if you have any encouraging words to share with everyone here." Like, go ahead and share it. They just give this open invitation, like, have some encouraging words here. And so uh, Paul stands up, gives his first sermon here about the good news, starts with Israel and Egypt, um, and kind of just gives this big uh, historical record of Israel leading up to uh, Jesus and talks about the um, the rabbis there uh, in Jerusalem and how uh, the sin the leaders uh, the Pharisees in Jerusalem and uh, Judea they were reading the prophecies of Jesus, not knowing that they were going to be fulfilling these prophecies themselves, being the ones to persecute Jesus and being the ones uh, to cause uh, suffering to Jesus, which was a really ironic thing for them to say. But Paul brings this up and says that they're the ones reading this um, and they're going to bring this on to themselves. And then he continues and says um, to uh, these Jews here at Antioch that uh, this is the way of salvation. These, these things that you've had to do before, Jesus has now paid this price. You don't have to sacrifice anymore. You don't have to um, try to atone for your sins in these ways that the Old Testament and the Law of Moses said that you had to do. And so he says, Jesus is the answer. He's paid it all. And the church is, is the synagogue. The people here are receptive. The Jews are very receptive to this. And so they're there for another week. And then the next Sabbath day comes. And Paul, they haven't just been sitting around for a week. They've been sharing the gospel with other people in Antioch. And then all of a sudden, there are crowds and there are people gathered at this synagogue. And so the Jews... When they got there, they were anxious to hear more about this uh, message of salvation, but they see the rest of these crowds, and then they get jealous. Because the thing with the Jews here, remember, is that 
that their relationship with God up to this point was pretty exclusive. It was, uh, we, we have the truth, uh, and then there's all these uh, pagan uh, nations. They worship idols and all these things. And, um, and so now the Gentiles are starting to come in and listen to this message. And this message is now for them. It's not just for the Jews. So the Jews get jealous, and it's actually the Jews that turn on uh, Paul and his companions, and they they stir up strife, they stir up um, uh, dissension in in the leadership of Antioch, and they get Paul and his companions uh, driven out of uh, the city. But they came, and he, they came to speak to the Gentiles there, and Paul even talks about like we knew that you would pretty much do this, but that's why we're here for the Gentiles then too, because they need to know this stuff. And so the Jews are just, they, they're they not over this exclusivity that they have enjoyed for a very, very long time. And so in fact, it says Paul and his companions shook the dust off of their feet when they left the city because um, they were like, look, you know the truth, you have the truth here, and you you even believed us and you wanted to hear more, but your, your jealousy is blinding you. And so uh, there are times when we, as Christians, um, sometimes we, we forget that even though we might not agree with somebody, uh, even though we might not relate to somebody, uh, even though we might even uh, hate somebody or, or and our relationship with them is just not great, um, God still calls us to love everyone and share the gospel with them. Uh, regardless. And so these Jews, they were the ones who were like super excited to be there. Then they see these crowds and they go, oh, wait, this isn't just for us. Then uh, we don't like this anymore, Paul. We don't like this uh, message being shared to everyone else. We thought this was just for us. And that's such a terrible attitude to have. And that's an attitude that we actually can have as believers that, oh, yeah, we're saved. We're Christians. And then we start to think, oh, like I'm better than this person. And it doesn't come across our mind that, oh, Jesus wants us to share the gospel with them, too. Jesus wants to share the gospel with this person and this person. And and if we don't have a mindset of Christ-like love towards people, we can really have a snobbish attitude where we, we kind of boast in the fact that we're believers, but you have to remember, you're not saved by your own means. You are only saved because God chose you. And if God didn't, if God didn't choose me, there's nothing that I could do uh, to go after Him. So it's by His grace we are saved. It's not by our works. It wasn't by anything that we've done, but according to His mercy. And so we need to be sharing that grace and mercy with everyone, regardless of what we think about them, because all we need to know is what God thinks about them, and all we need to do is share the gospel with them. That's Acts chapter 13. We'll see you next time.